Right, this time I have a visual web designer. It's not a HTML program. There's no HTML really involved. It's all drag and drop. So this is a great tool that's only available for Mac. I should start off by saying that. It's not on Windows. It's a great tool to design your website without any HTML or PHP knowledge. It's all drag and drop, and it is absolutely great for beginners. So let's take a look. First off, we have Zoom, which is simply to zoom in on the workspace. It doesn't affect the final output. I tend to have it on auto fit. We'll skip device for now. I'll go back to that in a minute. You then have grid. So you can show grids on the page. You can just sort of see it here in the background. That doesn't uh, show in the exported file. That is just to help you align your objects. You then can insert a text box, an image or photo, a gallery of photos, a box, which is a way to say create a header here or a footer. Wide, which is similar, but it stretches across the entire page. Then you have more. More is similar, but you also have map and video up here. Then down here you have a menu, such as this menu here. You could also do an individual button or a text input. You can add tweet or your own or uh, your own Twitter timeline or Facebook. You can load a remote image that's on another website you can use embed now embed is for an embed code which is about as much html as you're going to use here and you may never use this this is if you say want to use an embed code from a third-party website such as blogger or youtube and you want to import an element that uses an embed code such as a video from youtube or whatever you just click here and copy and paste the code from that website into it and you may never need to do this but if but that's a you know but that is as far as it goes when it comes to coding in this program you then have settings and then preview now let's look at the sidebars on the right here you have page which is where you can select your website's title a file name for the for that particular web page in this case it's a front page so i've called it index.html then you can add your metadata, such as your description and keywords. You can then can select your background color or a background image. Then the next tab is site, which is where you can put in a Google Analytics code to keep track of how many visitors you got. You don't have to do that if it's not something you want to do or you don't really know what that is. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do it. You can import a fav icon, which I recommend you do. But again, if you're a beginner, don't worry about that too much. Then image generation here, you might just want to leave it on default if you don't really know. Then to the left, the left sidebar is for your pages. So we have page one here, about page, gallery, and you can add pages to the list. You can hit this box next to each one to delete an individual page. This icon will duplicate that particular page. I'll quick click plus here and plus. It allows you to select various layouts that you can use as a template or you can just create a blank page completely. Now let's go back here to device. This means that it basically shows that you can create responsive web designs here. So basically this is something that search engines such as Google are starting to demand more and more and if your website supports this it will now be ranked higher in the search engines at least on google and what that what this means is that instead of just having one layout for pcs such as the one i'm on now you then can add which is says plus uh, says minus but that's because i've created them you can hit plus next to each one if you haven't already and create individual layouts for smartphones tablets and pcs so they all load and look right on different size screens. Unfortunately, unlike some programs, this doesn't do it automatically. You have to add the individual layouts and manually adjust them independently. It isn't all done in code for you. Preview allows you to preview the page in your web browser you can uh, select which web browser or multiple web browsers in the list there, then hit preview. Now, if you select an element such as this photo, you then get different options depending upon what object you have selected. You can give it a title and a description for that image. 
you can reveal it, which just shows where the actual original file was stored to. You can remove it. It tells you the image size and pixels. You have alignment options here. You can stretch it to fill, to fit, or nothing there. You can add a border. You can round the corners of the image. You can apply a shadow underneath. You can apply some transparency. Or in this case, you don't have to, but you can add a link to it to say the home page. So when a person clicks on that, it will take them back to the front page or a particular page that you select in the drop down. You can load image when visible. So if the image is off the page and you have to scroll to it, it won't load in the web browser until the person scrolls down. And when that image is needed, it will then load in the web browser. From alignment, you can align that particular image or object. So you can bring it to the front, send it to the back. You can lock it in place. You can show on this particular device, such as smartphone or not, you can be very detailed, you know, very precise with your uh, width, your height and your position on the page. So here it says 2016. Well, well what if we want that to be 2020? And yeah, as you as you saw, it moved down a little. You can show that object only on this particular page, or you can have it shown on every single page that you make. Which in this case, we want this to be a button to the home page, as well as a logo on every single page. So I have it shown on all pages. Your options up here are pretty standard. This stuff here is all that I've shown you here. You can format such as bold and center there, arrange from there and group, and all sort of standard options from here. It is version 1.2.1, which is the latest version at the time of making this, and it costs $59.99 in the UK, so it's £60 in the UK, and it is available in the Mac App Store. Now, what about problems? Have I found any issues with this? Well, one kind of issue which they already know about and it may change in the future, but it's one that I class as an issue that I think needs brought up. You cannot, uh, you cannot align or flow text around an image. So say we have this avatar here, this uh, profile picture up here in the corner. We then couldn't have a paragraph of text, of text wrapping around that image, which is something very basic to a lot of uh, editors, especially word processors. So that is a big, f you know, it's a very small feature, but it's one I, th I feel is very necessary t for this program. Hopefully that will change soon. As for bugs, I've only found two bugs so far. One is these, see I have these header images here. This is a photograph I took a few years ago of a flag I found in a nearby parking lot that was blowing in the wind with a CCTV camera uh, wrapped around a fence. This is one of my favourite photographs I've taken, so I've put it as a header here on my website that I've experimented with designing in this programme. And about me page, I've used another one of my pictures, which is of a post, a classic English post box outside of Hampton Court Palace. And on the other page, I've used that flag again. This page, I've used the post box. Then I've used the flag again. Well, it looks fine in the editor. What if I preview or export? Well, what I tend to have, let's go to web browser. This here is a preview of the local files on the computer. Looks great there. And for the most part, it will normally look good previewed locally here on every single uh page but then when i upload it to a web host you can see that the menu bar for a star is misaligned it's gone to the right side instead of centered and if i go to gallery looks fine go to quotes blank image and it never does load about me does not load go to contact me loads fine and so I thought maybe this is something to do with the web host. So I've checked the local files uh, where I exported it to, and some of the images have exported either transparent plain images or as white blo blocks. They are not actually exporting correctly. So some images don't seem to export correctly, even though this one here has, this has, 
It has on this page some pages it exports as a white image. I'm not sure why. I've tried deleting the exported files and re-exporting from scratch and it keeps doing it. And sometimes it will change what page it does it on. It won't always be the same page. The only other bug I found is to do with an alignment. I have a page here of quotes, just things I've posted on Facebook, things like that, silly things I've said, and I wanted to put a header in, header here of text as a separate text box that said, instead of saying like quotes, I was going to have it say something like stupid stuff I've said, just to make it less serious looking. And when I put it here, then move this paragraph of text down, it looks fine previewed on my computer, but when I upload the he header text in a separate text box, it's overlapping on top of the rest of the text. But those are the only two bugs I found, with images not always exporting correctly and some alignment issues. When you want to export, you just simply hit here, select a folder and it exports and you have all your HTML uh, files and all your image files there in one place. So do I recommend it? Well, there are some programs such as Rapid Weaver, which, is, which are more powerful for a similar price. However, I recommend you at least get a trial of Sparkle because I recommend that if you are new to web design, you haven't done much or maybe haven't designed one before, you start with Sparkle, uh, a trial with Sparkle, and take a look because it's so simple. It's so simple to create this. I created this. I know it hasn't got much content. It's not the best design site in the world, but I have created this in just a couple of minutes. It has one, two, three, four, five pages, including... Uh, another page it opens an external website it has header images on each of the pages as well as menus it has text it has an image gallery it has a contact page with a button for my email and it has a logo which links back to the front page on each of the pages this, cre uh, this created very quickly it took me a few minutes so if you're new to making websites or web design this is definitely well worth a look for a beginner if you're not a beginner well you, you might want to get the trial anyway and just see what you think just try it out you know it doesn't hurt it's a free trial but if you are not new to web design this is probably not going to be enough for you but if you are if you're brand new to web design this is one of the best programs probably you can get on any platform the it's a bit of a pity about the little bugs I found with the images exporting and some alignment issues but if that gets fixed in an update soon, then that, won't, of course, won't be an issue and it will be a very great tool for beginners. A link will be in the description to the website and to it on Mac, the Mac App Store. Thanks for watching. Please like and share. And if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe, as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.